I mean, there's a tin shed in a, in a little country town. He said, is it the most important um, asset of the family is the shed, you know, physical asset, you know. The, yeah. And um, I thought he was crazy, but more I thought about it, he's probably, he's probably right. Hey, Dan. Hey, Jeff. How are you, mate? Yeah, good to be, uh, good to be talking to you. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. It's been a while. It's probably the longest we've gone without seeing each other for, for uh, in, in <laughs> these COVID times. It's been a few months, hasn't it? Sort of uh, looking forward to getting back in the office uh, again soon, hopefully. Certainly can. Certainly are. Certainly are. Um, just thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know you're a phenomenally busy man and um, I was just super excited to uh, to get you on the show. And um, uh, as you know, we've, we've known each other for about seven years now. And I, I think you've, the family and, and, and the business and it's just such a fascinating story. And I think um, one that the audience is, is going to love to hear. So um, yeah, really woke up this morning and I was like, yeah, awesome. This is going to be this is going to be great. So again, thank you for your time, mate. That's Not at all. Like, you know, an hour is a um, no absolute pleasure. No, be looking forward to it. Thank you, thank you. So for the audience's benefits, we've known each other about oh, about sort of uh, seven years now. Um, we were introduced to each other for uh, by, by a mutual friend and and. Um, with the uh, the visions of um, enhancing and, and and sort of corporatizing the the commercial brand here in, in New South Wales, and we started um, Ray White Commercial New South Wales together, and we're business partners for for six five, five years, and and uh, and and I've been so now business owner of that business since then, and I have to say, mate, it's just been the most wonderful experience for me uh, coming from Jones Lang to a, a, a truly entrepreneurial family business and you know my feelings of of the family and the business and um and uh, so uh that that's you know for the listeners benefits uh we, we've known each other for, for that time and it's, it's been an incredible journey so thank you for everything so far i have to say well i'm just beginning jeff it's a long a long way to go but there's been a great um it's been a tremendous start yeah, yeah very proud of our friendship and relationship it has been. It has been, and um, so, mate. I thought I'd ask for if you could tell us a little bit about the, the family history. And I think um, in in my time in Ray White, there, there's certainly we, we come across people that actually don't know that you know Ray White is still a. It, well, Ray was an, a, a, actually a real person, and um, and it's you know a hundred percent family owned business. Um, you know, eleven hundred offices now, and you know, turnover of well over $40 billion every year. It's just a phenomenal story. And uh, so I'd love to, yeah, just hear a little bit about, you know, where it all started and, and the journey to sort of to, to here today. Yeah, well, it, I mean, the, the, the business, you say, is four generations. It's It started 120, next year will be our 120th year of being a family business. It started in a regional part of Queensland, a town called Crow's Nest, which is just north of Toowoomba. And uh, Ray started a pretty simple business back then and, you know, basically around marketing property and other associated, you know, goods to real estate um, to the local community. And, and livestock. And livestock, yeah, and insurance and a few other things at the time. And he was, he was, a, he was, a, he was a pretty strong salesman, strong marketer, and uh, he, he built a business from nothing a long, you know, long time ago and, you know, loved, fell in love with auctions. Um, from a young age, and that's been a big part of our of history. But he, you know, over time, his needs for himself and his family you know, grew and saw him move to Brisbane. And then over time, the, the family business has grown over that, you know, from starting Crow's Nest to Queensland, throughout Australia, New Zealand, and a number of parts throughout Asia. Um, and as generations have joined the business, it's expanded. There's obviously the Ray White business, which people see, and, and it's obviously, um, you know, name that's, in the community, and then another business of my our generation started. My brother Sam started a business called Loan Market, which is a very large loan brokerage business. The White and Partners a business I began a while ago. That's um, you know in, in the in the property investment space and other, and other real estate technology businesses. So as it, as it's gone, as it's grown, and as generations have come through, the family stuck together uh, remains fourth generation. We're across all, a lot of different areas. Um, and it's enabled the family to keep growing, keep having space and opportunity for all of us to contribute. And uh, yeah, now market leadership throughout Australia and New Zealand, a very strong market share, uh, keeps growing. But it's, it's, as I said, it's not just a Ray White piece, it's a, it's a broader, I think the magic happens when the broader elements of the group of the family group come together and, and, uh, and, and be of value. 
hundred percent. And can you talk us through the the um, the personalities and, and the identities of of the generational business to to today? Um, so Ray started the business uh, back in nineteen oh two, and then Alan, his son, took over the business before handing over to Brian, uh, who was the third generation leader, and his brother Paul joined him as well. And then the fourth generation, obviously, with myself and my two brothers, Sam and Ben, and I've, I've got a cousin, uh, Matt, as well in the business too. So yeah. there's a few of us. Um, not many daughters were born, unfortunately, but that's not the thing that fell through. Yeah. You've got one? I've got two. Oh, you've Sam's got two? Got, Sam's got two, and um, Ben's got one. Oh, so, look at that. Um, yes. Yeah, oh. Finally, some talent, uh, some brains coming through the ranks, hopefully. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so where... Ray started in Crow's Nest, Queensland, rural Queensland. He started in a shed, like an actual shed where he used to auction everything. And there was a quest for the family at, I think, the hundred, the centenary uh, year when the business turns 100 years old to find that shed. Tell yes. Us, can you tell us about that and where the shed is now? Yeah, so this, 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 the original shed, um, my father Brian and his brother found it, um, I think it was for our 100th anniversary, either that or Ray or Alan's 80th, I can't quite recall, but either way, they found the shed. It was being, um, it was a sort of used as a, as a um, hay barn. So they found it on a property and they moved it back to Crow's Nest, back to where the original, um, original Raywood office started. And you could see on the old tin shed the name of Ray, Ray Wyatt and some of the original imagery that we had from photographs. And it was restored and put into an historical society in, in Crow's Nest. Where it still stands today, it's a beautiful little village in Crow's Nest town, which is a very small, you know, Crow's Nest is a very sleepy, quiet town, um, very different to what it was when Ray started there a long time ago. And so, fortunately, the, the sheds there, we we every year we update inside the shed. We put the names of all our elite and chairman's elite performers goes in the shed, have a lot of old history of the company inside it. And um, I go there a lot. I use it for use it for some team meetings or some events. Um, it reminds us all of where we started from at, um, you know, the humblest of beginnings, a business that started as a family business, basically on the edge of civilization. And and you, when you go there, you're reminded of what can come from hard work and, and effort and ambition and, um, you know, providing for your family. And and so being there and being able to touch it and banging on the door, the old tin shed, you, you get that sense um, of custodianship, I think, of a business of realising that something happened or started a long time before yourself and um, you're just being able to contribute to its history going forwards is sort of a great you know, great thrill. So, yeah, the shed's a big part of who we are. Um, some people think, you know, some of the time of the old things do you get too nostalgic or stuck in the past. I think for us it, it just reminds us of what's important to us as a family um, and going back there, you know, ensures that you're you remain humble and you remain sort of firmly understanding of what's really important in any business. A hundred percent. I totally agree. And I, I'm sure like going up there for you must be, I get goosebumps just thinking about it, like must be just a phenomenal sort of source of inspiration and, and drive for you for fourth generation, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's grown to such a, phenomenal size already now and there's you know there's so much opportunity in, in the future I, do you yeah. do you do you find that you know when you go there that that's that's where you get the you get you know you get some good inspo from from being yeah. in that environment the energy of it oh completely i think it's that's the you mean the fact of where it is and what it is adds to that that um you know that that feeling you, you describe um and just the the pride in the in the past, reminding of all the people that contributed to where it started to where it is today, how lucky we've been. Yeah. One of the people have been part of that journey. And yeah, I think, you know, that they said that use that word custodianship before. I think it's, it's a powerful word. I use it a lot. Um, I think in the family business, how you know it's not yours, it's it's a family's, it's it's for the future generations, it's a it's a liberating concept. And I think um, you know, that responsibility that comes with it, that's a really strong motivating force um, and so being around the shed just makes you sure you know brings it back front and center um, into um, everything we do so yeah it's, it's something about it that's pretty magical I'm sure I'm sure yeah. so Brian often Brian often said I said once a while ago is it the most important I mean it's a tin shed in a you know, little country town he said is it the most important um, asset of the family is the shed you know physical asset you know that yeah and um, I thought he was crazy, but more I thought about it, he's probably he's probably right. 
Probably. Yeah, there's more, more. There's a lot of value there in, yeah. in so many different ways. Yeah. So, so Dan, um, so from from one office to you know 1,100 offices today, um, around the world, Australia, New Zealand, 130 offices in Indonesia, Middle East, Hong Kong, and and a lot of that growth occurring, um, in in your father's sort of um, you know stewardship of, of the business, like such a massive growth for, 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 for one business to, to, you know, over a period of time, is there anything, what do you think if, are there, are there, what would sort of top three things in, in your mind be for a business to grow to such great size, but to hold still such great integrity in the business itself, but also the brand, it's, you know, you get biz- businesses that grow and they get bigger and bigger and you, you lose, that that real feeling and which certainly is not the case here and so any it's like top top three things you would sort of see but that have sort of really helped that with the with to get to where you are today so i'd say a first one i'd say obviously being a family business is a great advantage uh the fact that it remained that way that we've all wanted to um continue its growth and momentum and had a long-term view we've sort of seen it as a, a business that we love and want to keep growing on an asset to sort of maximise and sell or, 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 or move on from. It was always, the business was always a big part of our lives. We loved it, always have, and and, and that's given us a great focus and, and uh, dedication to it, not sort of wave it along the way. So I think that's probably the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Second one, I think, is we've got a, a sort of a, a genuine belief in the ability or capacity of, of every individual and their um, ability to succeed and to uh, you know create something special and provide for them, themselves and their families. And I think they're just uh, talking about the shed and a lot of people came with it since. We provided a platform that really backs ambition and individuality and, and capacity mm. and, and believed in them. It's not really, we talk about a brand, but we're more than that. But brands is something on the side. To us, it's about believing in the individual and their ability and providing a framework for that, which is a sort of a, a entrepreneurship franchise model. Yeah. So the second one, and the third big one is leadership, and 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 I think it's something we talk about a lot. The concept of nothing good comes without leadership. Um, nothing can really it creates long term without it. Mm. And it's um, in getting where you want to go. If if you're not clear on what you want and how you want to get there, um, you know things that things don't happen. And mm. um, so those three things about the family, the power of the individual, and also. The sort of the commitment to leadership is is probably the three, without doubt, of, you know, the yeah. three things for us. Well, look, man, I can certainly speak. Look, I've been being business partners for five years. I I learned a huge amount from you personally, and and your style of leadership in in terms of really letting and you know you certainly you obviously talking about that, but I can I can evidence that that's that's how it really rolls and. Uh, the way that you and the family, you know, you you let businesses do their thing and you hire the right people and, and they grow. And, yeah, I've certainly learned a huge amount um, from you and the family in that regard. So so thank you for that. And it's, it's, um, uh, it's you know, I could be your, when I started your typical business owner that, you know, that sort of you, you sort of, you want to be over everything, and um, yeah, it's been a, a big, a big, uh, a big learning curve for me. And so it's been, it's been wonderful. Um, what do you, what, what do you think? And, and Brian talks about this a lot, um, and and I suppose we just touched on it a bit there. But, um, you know, your your style of leadership. Um, what would you, what do you think are the key elements of great leadership? In addition to you know, letting people grow and do their own thing. What are some other things that, you know, that you try and sort of go about your leadership, how, how you try and go about things in, in your day of running such a massive business with so many different businesses, you know, and, and, and people? What, do you, what are the key elements that you try and focus on? Well, I think the, the, the most important principle is that leadership is something that you can improve and develop and, and enhance and it's not a, a, a finite skill that you're born with like you know like a lot maybe other things in life um the leadership piece is something that you have to be committed to over the long term and keep improving and it's not it's something you have to work on like any other skill or anything else so i think i think the leadership term is, is something it, no matter where you start it's um 
always something can improve and develop and everything else. So and that's a beauty of it. It's, it's, it's a great, rewarding thing that never stops, um, and you can keep leading until your until your until your last days. So that, that's the most important thing for mine, and, and reflecting on your own leadership skills. Are they getting better? What are you doing about improving it? How have you? What have you learned from? What are you going to do differently to be better? Yeah. So that's, that's probably the, the key thing in terms of in terms of what I think particular things that work for for me. I mean, I think the most important thing leaders sometimes forget is they try and be other people. They they don't um, be themselves as much as they need to be. They're not they're not authentic enough. They're not they're not genuine. Um, well, they try not to be genuine. They want to be. Um, they they want to have be very strategic or very um, um, very charismatic leader, whatever it might be. That they've read other people being. I think the most number one thing of being a leader is obviously being true to yourself. Because unless you're like that, people won't relate to you. They won't be able to communicate with you or be honest with you. Yes. Um, so I think make for everyone um, leader. There's nothing to change. It's just improving your skills. And then you know everyone's got their own style um, about leadership. I'm I'm very much a live and let live sort of leader. I, I believe in in people's capacity. My my job is to help them become more effective, better, chase their own potential, and that's done not by telling them what to do, but actually supporting them and 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 learning with them and making mistakes with them and making sure you never lose being by their side. Yes, um, we're sticking with them on the way through. So. Um, that, that, that's that's my own personal style. Just making sure I'm true to myself and and, and um, you know celebrating everyone differently because everyone in your team is different. Yeah, and listening to them is is the most important thing. Yes, yeah, fantastic. And uh, and has in in terms of you know obviously Brian being you know a, a massive mentor and and leader. Yeah. Um, and 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 uh, someone that you've learned a huge amount from. Anyone else? Sort of. Have you had any other sort of mentors in you know growing up in your in your life that it, that you've sort of that you've learned from? Yeah, I've, I've been fortunate to work for some amazing people before I joined the family business. I worked for a guy called Richard Friend in Brisbane for a few years, and Arthur Anderson, who was an amazing leader, an unconventional, genuinely authentic. Um, he was wasn't. Yeah, you know, for for a big four accounting firm, he was himself, and he he created a great sense of um, uh, great relationship with all his team. And I was very fortunate to to work with him early on. And um, I mean, the, the great thing about being in my role is because we have you mentioned a thousand business owners around the country, around the around sort of the region. There are so many amazing leaders in there that I learn from every day. Um, amazing young people, um, you know, what some young people are doing now around leadership and taking their businesses. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's absolute blessing to be able to, you know, uh, see that up close all the time, and just being a sponge and, and learning from from everyone all the way through. It is such a great sponge environment, isn't it? That's one thing I absolutely loved from the minute I started here. It's just because you're in an environment of other business owners, and everyone wants the best for everyone. Everyone wants to improve, and when everybody's living and dying by the sword. Like improvement is the only way forward, and yeah. I think the family sort of with all the conferences and everything you offer, it just it's it's clearly and everyone laps it up. So it's um yeah it's 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 a it's a wonderful environment and uh, um, yeah. So um, and I think I think if, for, for, for for mine, if I'm getting a, some leaders together, if I talk too much, I mean, it, there's just the 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 insights and thinking around leadership that comes in the room is um is, is so valuable. So you know, often it's just Bring the right people together, together, and letting them speak and letting them share things and facilitating a chat rather than me, you know, preaching answers to things. Yeah. It's, it's it's more to provide that forum for people to contribute and finding their own answers. Everyone's got slightly different needs, different where they're at with their careers. Yeah. They'll they'll latch onto that little little gem um, that someone else might not. That's 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 the beauty of what it is. That's so good, isn't it? And yeah. and just one more question before we uh, we head to a break, mate. Um, so Harvard Business School in the states, well known for the the, uh, the the program that yourself and your brothers and your dad go to every January. Big mm. commitment on the other side of the world when everyone else is holidaying, and you're at the Harvard Business School um, doing long days of strategizing with other you know leaders and entrepreneurs around the world. So. How and I, I remember when I you know just started and you just come back from there and every time when you come back it's you 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 just seem to be on a on an on another level again and um, yeah. how how so two questions I suppose how you know wonderful how, how important has that been for you and and 
and how important is just continually learning for someone to, you know, continually be better in, in your eyes? I mean, the other thing without it, I'm not sure where, you know, where we'd be. It certainly gave us a whole, whole new insight, a level of confidence, a level of curiosity, um, and a real approach to learning that, you know, Socratic process of, of looking at case studies and debating them and sharing them and working out answers. And, you know, it's been one of the great things we've, we've done as, as, a, as a broader family business. We've now, Professor Grosberg, who works with our team now, who you know well as, as well, who, you know, when I used to come back from Harvard, try to do my, yeah, when I tried to do my impression of, of him, it wasn't as good. We thought we'd get the real thing and bring him over, which, um, which ended up being fantastic. So it, it, it is learning, getting out of your, your area, learning from a broader perspective is everything. Um, you know, that, that's as good as I, I can find, but there's that everywhere, you know, stepping outside your immediate circle of influence and, and getting a bigger perspective. And, um, yeah, this that process, this, this is a, as a, you know, it's also a, a quite important signal to the team is that, you know, we want to do this, you know, it's not just us, you know, going, what you, what's everyone doing to improve themselves? Yeah. So, you know, what, how are we all developing? Um, you know, people might find their own version of that somewhere else and we encourage that. So I think it's a great message as well to the to everyone that we're committed to ongoing growth and development and we've still got heaps to learn ourselves and yeah. that, that doesn't change. Yeah, so much to learn every day, um, mate. Thank you so much. Um, more questions to uh, to to ask you, so we'll uh, have a bit of a break and come back in a few minutes. So, mate, um, some massive decisions the family has made over the years, going from one office to owning a number of offices, but still owning those and running those offices to becoming a franchise, to coming out of Queensland, to New South Wales and New Zealand, and it grows and, and, and so many decisions. And I know as a business owner, you you feel, yeah, that's the right decision. And sometimes you just don't know if that's the right decision. And, and Brian talks of the 2am club where he's walking the streets at 2am wondering what to do. Like, you know, yeah. are, are all, all decisions, are, all, are they all just, yeah, this is it, this is the clear path we're doing it, or are they just, oh, we're just going to have to do this and see how we go? Yeah, no, I think I think very much a lot of it is you look back on the big on the big decisions, and they were I wouldn't say they were overly strategic or you know completely thought through or the, or you know part of a, a consultant's plan or anything like that. It was, it was all the big decisions basically came from sort of challenges or threats to the business that we had to respond to, and I don't know if that's if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but but all the things that happened, the big steps, were all because she's we we you know what we've got now is under pressure if we don't do something different because you know this could you know this this competitor is coming in or so and so is doing that and I suppose the taking the risk of changing and re recognizing the threat and saying you know what if we just keep going where we're going we're in trouble here we've got to take a chance and move. And that old phrase, the biggest risk you can take is not to take a risk, you know. So, um, and that's sort of really reflected in most of our big decisions. You know, moving out of Queensland was a response to groups coming up to Queensland. You know, Hookers and Rain and Horn wanted to come and dominate Queensland. Oh my, you know, go, oh my God, how are we going to compete with, you know, national brands? That was obviously the threat. And back in the day when, you know, buyers used to, drive up and drive in the office and you know it was before the internet so not being in sydney was a big threat when your other know, groups were there um lj hooker was bought by a bank um and they're offering mortgages suddenly that's when sam started loan market which has grown on to be an amazing story of success um again came from that from that issue of you know threats and issues against us to to get you know to a change course and so yeah if you look at all, all the big moments there Probably taking, being able to back ourselves to change, take a risk, and um, not being complacent with what we've got is going to continue, and always staying on your toes mm. and being alert to that. And, and you know, if you're not prepared to be open-minded and confront the brutal reality of where you are and, and change the result, then um, then you're going to be in trouble. And all those decisions, mm. um, you know, even Ray leaving Crow's Nest, it's a pretty big call. A um, little town in Brisbane, we joke about how big that was. So, yeah, that, those those sort of things, um, you know, Amazing. back on them, yeah. So, and, that, they're, they're, and the decisions, even sort of the recent times, 
investing in what we've done in various technology businesses, real estate tech and real estate teams, again, probably more a response to the threat of non-traditional competitors coming into our space and realising, no, we're going to change, we're going to be much better at that ourselves and mm. employ a whole new range of people and skills. Um, from you touched, we touched on a couple of times, it would be great to explain for, for the listeners, so some of the other businesses in the, the Ray White group, um, Loan Market and, and, and Whiten Partners, can you tell us a bit about, you know, both phenomenally strong and big businesses in their own rights, can you tell us a little bit about those? And Yeah, well, well Loan Market started in the 90s offering mortgages, people wanted to buy a house, you know, could be off, could a loan broker offer them a chance, a, a, a finance proposal to borrow money. So we were a broker, a loan broker. That was when Aussie Home Loans was starting out. Yeah. And um, that business now has about, of the brokerage market, which is now, say, give or take 55 or 60% of the market, you know, the, the loan market team represents a quarter of all those mortgages yeah. across Australia and New Zealand. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. So, um, you know, very big business, all built from the Ray White relationships early, but since then it's gone way beyond the Ray White relationships and you know, developed a completely independent business that also helps Ray White because we do loan market brokers working with Ray White offices. Yeah. It's grown way beyond that. Yeah. yeah White and Partners business, we wanted to get into, we thought we could provide, I like doing the family business. I didn't really want to go and get a job with the family. I wanted to contribute and make it better and try and make it bigger. I didn't want to work for my brother. Um, I didn't want to work for, you know, inside the business or be seen as, just the boss's son. So I wanted to start an investment business that I've, I've been doing outside there at Macquarie. So you know, we started White and Partners Business offering um, investments in real estate, like property trusts and syndicates. And that now, yeah, it's, it's grown well. And we, we're in Brisbane and Sydney, have, you know, uh, I think it's over $1.5 billion of capital now invested in those deals. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's done well. So, yeah, those, and then my the younger brother, Ben, who has a, a technology business called ALO Property Management. And, um, yeah. It's a big team of people developing software for property management. Yeah, they're, they're our core, our core, um, you know, family businesses, and we've got a few things off the side. But yes, you know, we've been lucky with family because we love everything. We 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 don't have a lot of things outside that. We just reinvest inside the business, and yes, and um, always felt comfortable doing that. Always enjoyed yes. that. Part. Yeah, it's fantastic. And so, do you, Dan? Um, uh, you know, a lot of different leaders and successful people have their own thoughts on on goals and you know having personal goals and and uh, the way that they sort of set them and achieve them and go go through them. Do you do you what what do you have a process or do you have any ways you know that you yeah. go through sort of personal and, and, and business goals and um, yeah, what's your thoughts on on that sort of stuff? I um I'm big on um. Uh, I, I use a, a system called OKR system, which is a, you know, it's a objectives and key results. It's sort of, you know, there's books on the subject. You can, um, you can read on the topic. It sort of came out of um, the Intel uh, business in, in the US. But it basically ran what are your key objectives you're trying to make, trying to achieve? And they're pretty ambitious. I have five of them, of four, sort of five of them um, that I say to the team, these are the key objectives for us as a, as a group. And each quarter, I have three results I'm trying to achieve for all of those objectives every quarter. Yeah. That I mentioned. So the objectives are very long term, ambitious, dreamy, sort of. If I read them out loud, you'd roll your eyes and think they were sort of, you know, he's on drugs. Yeah. And then, the, but the three results are measurable. Um, you can attack them every quarter and try and make progress. So that really, so way, way I work my time is I spend a lot in the business talking to people, just obviously dealing with issues. But then making, I spend a lot of time focusing on those results I'm trying to get every quarter yes. um, group. So um, yeah. other than that, I'm not big on financial budgets and I'm not, that's just yeah. not my thing. Um, we've got a great family CFO, you know, Andrew Jamson, who's a big yeah. part of it. So I, I was not worry about that. I was amazed. I, 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 I could certainly vouch that. I was amazed when we were sort of business partners. I don't think we had a finance meeting for about eight months. I was like, oh, this is, uh, this is, I, yeah. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> no, it's very fortunate. We do have, as a family, like to our family businesses, we do have a, a, a connecting family office. Yes. Uh, family is a bit of a grand term. It's a family, you know, finance yes. team. And um, he, he keeps us, he, he drives that forward and, um, you know, a really good communicator and know where we are. So, very fortunate that that's been in the group for a long time and um, yeah. Bridge Anson that runs that's been with us a long time. So yes. that enables me to, I don't have to spend too much time in that space, which is very liberating. 
Yeah, fantastic. That's, that's for, for a leader, that's just gold, isn't it? Be able to sort of do what you do well and what you love to do, which is, you know. Um, and on that point, I have to say, I think one of, you know, being close to you um, personally, but also in, 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 in business, one of your great skills i found is getting the best out of challenging situations. I think you're very good at, you've got a very calm mindset and in some very challenging situations are able to calmly get the best out of those scenarios. Is, is that a skill that like I, that you, you can learn? Do you think, is that something that you've learned throughout your studies you think it's you know something that you know you you, you is you're gifted with or, or you sort of you, you've learned about yeah i definitely think it's learned about um i you know i've been through various cycles like we all have gfc um and obviously done a lot of studies as you've spoken about i I'm much better at it now than i used to be mm. um, i think it does come with experience and um there's no shortcut on that uh you know, having my father or next next generation around during GFC was good. It was a, it was interesting to watch them go through that versus the younger generation. I learned a lot by watching it, mm. and just the importance of you know, I learned very I learned you know, it wasn't natural. I learned um, especially in the GFC days that you know there's absolutely confronting the brutal realities and being honest with everyone exactly where you're at is the only way to go. And if you try and get through a tough situation by not confronting things and you're going to go, that's when you're in real trouble. Mm. And so I think that that sort of concept of no, in tough times come, you can really shine. It's a way you can make, you know, our growth as a business has always been best in tough times. Um, mm. So tough times are a good opportunity, but you must be open to them and not deny they're there and not, not bullshit people that they're not as bad as it is. Mm. But then you're going to be absolutely unwavering in um, convincing others that you're going to get through it. Mm. And that you're not sure how you're going to get through it, but you're going to get through it. And people believe that and they, they follow you in that process. Mm. So it's that, it's that fine line between absolutely being honest, but at the same time um, not giving any doubt that you're going to find an answer and get through. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but, you know, I think there's no question that you get better with that at the time, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's, we had a wonderful wall of sayings in the kitchen at work and... Um, I know, um, as, as you know, I'm a third generation real estate agent and yeah. my dad had a lot of sayings going through um, growing up, a lot of very unique sayings, some of which I could say, some of which I can't. But um, what, And I, I, I called them moxisms and one of the things mm. he used to say was, um, he said, oh, I just keep getting that ball back, mate. And I used to be like, Dad, I want to get the ball back. I want to hit aces. I want to hit winners. Mm. And it's only... Just recently, when we went through a big market downturn, I'm 49, I was 47, and I've actually realised actually what that meant. And it's just no matter what's going on, you just got to do the basics always. Yeah. You know, rain, hail or shine, boom, bust, whatever. Yeah. And uh, I was listening to a podcast of Kobe Bryant, uh, the rest in peace, Kobe, and um, when he was 11, he, went for, he, he scored no baskets at all, no baskets, and he spent two years on just doing the basics and yeah. and then he just basics plus his 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 maturity and growing he, he took over yeah. uh, are there any any sayings that i mean brian's got a million of them oh, yeah. what 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 are what are a couple of uh gray white classics that uh that, that... well there's so <laughs> brian's got, um um brian's got a lot like he, he, he he's good at them i must say one, one is one that, that really echoes well is that um the, the, the closer you get to your potential, the further away it gets. Yeah. You know, the, the logic in the, you know, obviously the better you get, the more opportunities you have, the, the, yeah. you know, therefore, you know, so it's um, it, it's a great it's a great line. It, it's um, uh, someone means a lot. The, the other one is um, we talk a lot about, I don't know if it's Brian or just the group, but we talk about, um, you know, good problems. Yes. And that's a, a word that's used a lot, but phrase, but I think, a lot of the issues we face are good issues, and we sometimes we lose sight of the fact that there are issues of success, that the yeah. problems that come from as a result of success. Yeah. And we can get upset and get frustrated about things, but if we look at it, in, we look at it very clearly. It's because we've been successful sometimes with causing issues, and I think it's a great um, way to look at things and changes your approach to the issue. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean it's easy to solve. 
Um, you know, problems of success can actually almost be harder than other ones, but um, it's a, it's a lovely phrase to keep your your um, keep your keep your mind sane. Yeah, and, um, and approach issues like that. So, speaking of speaking of of sanity and look at you know um, uh, wellness being such an important term these days, and you know in in business, in personal, and um, yeah. Uh, what what are you know you you've you lead, you've run a very big business and you have many challenging scenarios and some days that probably you you you're brain bending sort of days and uh, mm-hmm. what are some things that that you do mate for your own personal peace of mind like you know any morning routines exercise and and how do you unwind out of those days how do you look after yourself. Well, I mean, uh, as you know, I've got a bit of a routine with exercise and stuff, but I wouldn't say I'm, I'm really um, I'm remarkable in that sense. But I obviously do, you know, I've always, the family's always been a big one to exercise and having some routine around that stuff, which gets me, I think it's really good for your head and obviously your body. Um, I think the big thing for mine, Jeff, is um, like people uh, look for, um, you know, purpose. Um, you heard that, you know, it's a phrase around a lot and, and that sort of thing. I mean, I, I'm very lucky that I know that I, the work I do, I can influence a lot of the outcomes, um, you know, and there's a good, there's, a, there's obviously a bit of responsibility there, but I, I know that the work that I do can be very beneficial to people if I do it well and if I work hard and, and I get good, good results for them. Yeah. So I think I can know that you've had a tough day, a long day, head spinning. I know that I'm probably very fortunate to have maybe been able to... Um, be done a good thing for a lot of different people. Um, obviously, so bad. Yeah. yeah, bad. We're going to do some bad things too, which is obviously you know this is the other side of it. But yeah, I think it's very liberating in that sense. Is that in terms of purpose, very lucky. I don't I don't feel like I've got to go and find something outside work to contribute back to things. I I don't I don't, I don't sort of doubt that. It's, it's all in front of me. It's everything around me in, the, in, in our family business, and then I can have a lot of um, I, I can I can be be, be useful to a lot of different areas that, that's, that's that's very rewarding yeah so and it's um as you know i read a lot of books and I, i'm very fascinated and interested in this sort of subject and it's generally it's, it's a very big theme across you know the definitions of success and 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 fulfillment is yep. helping other people and that's yep. a great that's a great that's a wonderful thing and you know you, you're that being a franchise or you're all about providing value to people to achieve their own dreams so yeah. that's really that's really cool to know that yeah. that's what keeps you know that's what cools your mind at the end of a, a big day because it's yeah. that's what you love to do and that's yeah. great no, I, used to, I, mean, I remember it was an event once and it was a, uh, a charity event and um, we supported something and someone said oh, I must give you a lot of you know joy that you can work and help contribute to the charity which which of course it is you know no question um but at the same time it, it's um i think inside work there's so much you can do and sometimes we look outside of our work to have meeting but there's so much is inside what you do day to day yeah um, and, and we miss that yeah and uh we often overlook it and look for the next thing when it's actually right in front of you where you can oh. actually be of help yeah. Yeah, that's so that's huge, mate. So we've got what well, like one one last question. Um, yeah. What would you, if you could give your ten year old self some advice? So looking back to your, yourself at you know at a young age, what could you sort of what sort of advice could you give yourself? Sort of looking back at you know who, who you were and how you were you know at a young age. I see that he's a 15 year old, so I tell him lots of stuff, but he doesn't listen, which is probably the same as me if I went back and told myself anything. Yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, the, obviously the big thing is to, you know, if I look back on, on my career, I mean, there's, no, there's nothing I'd change, and I'm very fortunate for everything everything I've done. But I think, like, like you said before about the quote from your old man, I think, you know, just take your time and listen to people a bit older than you. Um, it's not all about you. It's about you, you, one day you'll be grateful mm. that you did something with other people as opposed to trying to do it all on your own. And, um, you know, I, I, I dismiss it and wouldn't listen, but that's probably the biggest learning yeah. um, for mine. I'm very fortunate. You know, family businesses is, is, is an area where people 
from the outside, give advice to people in family businesses and tell them to, you know, take over the business or make it your business or get rid of this and yeah. make it your own. Yeah. I'm very lucky to have been in a family environment and um, that I've been, you know, patient and, and, and um, benefited so much from being part of a, a multi-generational business and, 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 so, and being into it rather than trying to sort of cut out of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Mate, thank you so much for your time. It's, no problem. Uh, it's great. going on in, in your world and I really appreciate it and I know that there's going to be many people that are going to really enjoy this. So um, there's some some, lots, some some more good being delivered out there from, from your day. So thank you, mate, and I look forward to seeing you uh, in the office soon, hopefully. Uh, pleasure, Jeff. It's, um, you know, we're lots of our family business and, uh, you know, loved, um, loved our first six, seven years together and hopefully we'll get I'll see you on one of those waves you caught like you did last time at um, oh, Indonesia. Oh, mate. I can still see it oh, from the head. Yeah, you were actually in the photo. You were sitting there in, in front of it. In the, it's, uh, yeah, that was just remarkable. I'll look forward to that too. Thanks, mate. Okay, mate. All right.